Since the 1950s, humanity has been sending animals and organisms into space to study the effects of microgravity, radiation, and more on various forms of life, to better understand the risks and consequences of going to space ourselves. We've also been looking for other signs of life out there, in our own solar system and in the universe at large. We've also been trying to understand ourselves and where life came from, to either prove or debunk pandemics and spermia, the idea that life was transplanted here from asteroids or whatever object it was that hit the Earth in the primordial past that created the moon. What if I told you that we found a simple organism that can help us answer those questions and potentially enable a renewable source of oxygen if and when we get serious about space settlements on the moon and Mars? Well, a tiny cyanobacteria or a blue-green algae found in deserts and even in Antarctica might be just that. This particular species is called Crucoxa diopsis. Yes, I practiced that, and I think I'm still saying it wrong. Crucoxa diopsis is too hard to say throughout the rest of this video, so I'm just going to call it the desert algae from here on out. After decades of research and multiple space missions, it turns out that this desert algae can survive intense amounts of radiation, is capable of photosynthesis in multiple spectrums of light, producing oxygen as its byproduct, it can survive in extremely hot and cold environments, it can repair its own DNA, and it can survive on rocks in a dehydrated and dormant state for millions of years. A new paper has been published by Daniela Billy, a member of a team of researchers from the Italian Space Agency, the German Space Agency, the European Space Agency as a whole, and NASA, who have been studying this particular strain for a number of years, several decades actually. I'm going to link this paper in the description if you would like to learn more and read it for yourself. It's currently free. I'm not sure if it's going to be paywalled in the future, but it is currently free. So if you'd like to learn more, you can get the PDF from the link down below. There have been multiple space experiments, but the one this paper talks about is an experiment at the International Space Station, which ran from 2014 to 2016, that exposed several samples of this desert algae to space for a year and a half. There were two different groups of experiments that were given two different names, Biomex and BOSS. Biomex stands for Biology and Mars Experiment, and BOSS stands for Biofilm Organisms Surfing Space. That's such a great acronym. And they were both installed onto a platform called Expose R. <laughs> Expose is an acronym that stands for Exposing Organisms to Space Environment, and the R stands for Russian because this particular module was on the Russian Zvezda module in 2014 through 2016. Gotta, gotta love the space acronyms. Biomex was looking at individual cell samples, whereas BOSS was looking at a collection of cells in a biofilm. The single cells were placed into simulated Martian dirt and simulated lunar dust, and all of the samples were dehydrated first before this year and a half exposure to space. But after returning to Earth in 2016, the samples were rehydrated and compared to samples of the same strains on Earth that didn't go to space. Not only did the space samples come back to life, they started growing. They did have radiation damage, but they're capable of repairing their own DNA to prevent mutations in their genetic code from emerging. In fact, the researchers claim that this particular strain is very receptive to genetic modification, and they could produce some sort of super algae in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I present my new bioengineered creation, Berserker Krukoxa Diopsis, the conqueror of carbon. <laughs> no, just kidding. That's why I didn't get into biology and genetics. I would have definitely been a mad scientist. As a matter of fact, I'm a bit of a moron, so there's probably even more amazing things about this strain of desert algae that I didn't understand and went right over my head. <laughs>
What I do understand, though, is that the scientists believe that this strain of desert algae can help us understand where life came from, can help us detect life on other planets. One of the things about this is that when this algae does die, it leaves behind biosignatures, which allows us to help train our instruments and refine our instruments on our life-detecting probes and rovers so that we don't get false positives. Although maybe a hyper-specific example, it still can help us more accurately detect past or present life on Mars, the other moons in our solar system, even the asteroids in our solar system. And if we do space settlement, scientists believe that a small colony of this algae could help produce air for the first habitats and bases. And apparently, this desert algae is resistant to salt and other perchlorates. So even beyond being used in a life support system, these things could be an extremely useful ally in terraforming a planet. But I don't know. As I said, I'm a moron. So what do you think? Do you think that this can help us detect life in the universe? Or could it potentially help us produce life support system in early bases or terraform planets someday? There is another paper that was published in 2022 by the entire team of researchers. If you'd like to learn even more about this, I'll put the link to that paper down below as well. In any case, I think that this was really cool and really interesting, and a bit of a shame that it took almost 10 years to go over the data after this experiment, and kind of goes to show how important the sciences are and how underfunded they are. And yet, despite that, we're still making amazing discoveries every single day. Thank you very much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and have found this information useful. My name is Space Mike, and until the next time I see you guys, keep moving onwards and upwards, and don't forget, per aspera ad astra, through difficulty to the stars.